Hello there, my mate Vince here, and welcome to another Returns video. So these are two boxes full of 40 customer returned items. I bought them both from eBay, from the same seller, and they were both auction buys. I paid £103, I think it was, for both boxes. So there might be good opportunity here to make your money back, because, for example, this item here alone is a 70, no, £80 item, I think it is. So you can see one item nearly pays for both boxes. There should be some interesting faults in here and some of them look brand new so they might be faults straight from the manufacturer which I find always the most interesting to see why something has failed so quickly. So let's get started and it'd be nice to see at the end of the video whether or not you can break even, whether or not you might be able to make money or whether or not I've bought two big boxes of complete and utter junk. Let's get started. So here we have a little mini hi-fi system. So a CD player, DAB radio, etc. And it says it doesn't read CDs and rejects discs. And that is what happens. So when we put in my favorite CD here, it goes in, nothing happens. It doesn't come up with anything here and we're on the correct CD thing. And then it just comes out again without me pressing anything. So let's take it over to the mat and see why. It's, why is it rejecting it? Is there a little micro switch in there which has not been hit so it thinks there's the wrong size disc in there? I mean, it knows to eject it, but for some reason it doesn't want to play it. Let's take it apart, see if we can work out what's happening. Still a current product. In fact, this was returned in May this year. Well, it depends when you're watching it, 2023. And you can see it here. Check it out. £80, £79.99, so well worth fixing, and you can tell that this is brand new. So this is 40 from manufacturer. It's been delivered, and it's been plugged in, and it's not working. So I'm hoping it's going to be an easier fix than something that might have been used for a year or two. Also, good news for me is no electric shocks, because we have a separate uh, mains adapter, so it's going to be low voltage going into here. So let's take it apart, various screws around the back, they look like they are crossheads, so nice and straightforward to get into. So now I want to look at the CD side of it, which is hidden in here. So now, how does it know? Okay, right, uh, have a look here. Let me know if you see anything. So just spend about 30 seconds looking around here. I'll zoom in a little bit for you. Do you notice anything? Anything with the ribbon cables maybe? What do you think of that one there? It's not making a contact, is it? Look, can you see that's pushed in, but that's not. I don't think that size making a contact. I think that might be it. And look, it does go down to what looks like the CD player part of it. So maybe this is the thing here feeding the laser. Well, I don't know, maybe that's feeding the laser, but maybe this is something to do with the mechanism. Or not, maybe this could be. This might not be related. This might be for the uh, the thing at the front. But it definitely wasn't pushed all the way in. Now, is this pushed? That's pushed all the way in. Let's see if that's made any difference. No, it's not that. Oh, I thought it was going to be the ribbon cable. Well, thought definitely got it wrong there. So let's strip it down more to try to get the actual mechanism out so we can find out what's happening. Should we try to set the lid off here or is it all going to spring out at me? This could be disastrous. So we've got a couple of springs there. I'm going to have to undo them. Right, let's see if we can work out what's happening. So we have this here to read. Even that doesn't... Oh. Okay, that doesn't really want to move very nicely. Uh, so when we put it in... The roller brings it in, but then why is it not? It rests against these things. So is there a micro switch to let it know when it's in? There should be something to say that it's in. 
to then, you know, make the mechanism work. So what is that? Well, that spring just fell out at me. Right, okay, there is some mechanism here on this side here which is linked to this. Can you see these are all turning, but this thing here isn't turning. So I don't think it's locking into place. You see this kind of, uh, you know, rack and pinion type thing here? Yeah, watch, when I turn this here, can you see it's not engaging in that? So let's go the other way and see if it brings it in. Now. Nah. So when the CD goes in, what's supposed to happen to here? This should move up here and then it should be engaged like that. Can you see? But it's not. And that's going to pull this mechanism, I presume, down or up. Yeah, it's something to do with this. So I bet it's something to do with this wasn't located properly. So that thing here is going to go into here. I'm not sure where this thing goes though. Oh, that's <coughs> that must be what the CD hits against. When it goes in, it must hit the CD. That's what it does. It hits this out this way, doesn't it? Right, so we need to see if that bit's working. In. That needs to move that out. Maybe it's not moving that out enough. That's what I think the problem is. That brings it out. That brings it in, moves that across. And it needs to keep on working. But it's not moving this up. This is not being moved up. No, it is, it's on there. Okay, well it's not going to be an easy fault. I think this is faulty, this part here from the manufacturer. I'm not quite sure why. Hold on a minute. That thing, this can't close down. So this has to be... That has to be that side of the plastic, does it not? You see in that groove there, this thing here should be in that groove. I think. Look, how can that travel up or down? It's completely locked. It can't travel down. That needs to be the other side of this metal thing. Look, it's not doing anything. There we go. There, it's that side. Look, that side there. Now, watch. Look, it allows it now to, look at that, it allows it to go all the way down. Can you see that? Can you see that that side's locked down? And now, up this way. Hopefully it's gonna go back up. There you go, and back up again. Right, so if we do it here now. Yeah, it's going. Well, that was nice. It was just put together wrong when this actual disk drive thing here was assembled. So, uh, yeah, I suppose an easy mistake. But, uh, yeah, one side couldn't go down because it was being blocked from going down because it wasn't in the correct groove. So now I just need to put it back together. First time I put it back together, I do do it incorrectly. The spring that sprung out, I put onto the left-hand side. But after watching the video back, I realised it needs to go on the right-hand side. It looks like it could go either side. There's kind of little indentations on both sides where it can go. So, uh, yeah, let's pick up the video now after I put the spring in the correct side and when I've got it roughly back together. And let's see now if it will take the disc in. Right now, come on, work. Here goes. I think it's gonna be successful. Ready? Come on. Yes. Yes, it's spinning. And it says T23, 62 minutes. Fantastic. Play. 
Ah, here we go. Ah, the lovely tones of Daniel. Fantastic, excellent. Right, okay, let's put it fully back together. All right, here it is looking immaculate because it is brand new. So well happy with that one. CD is now playing fine. If you go to other tracks, it also plays them fine. It doesn't make any weird scraping noises or anything. It just works, which is great. And also the discs go in and out now, nice and quick, look at that. Which is fantastic, just as you would expect them to. So yeah, really good. And no specialist tools needed or specialist knowledge, just using your eyes and a screwdriver and you could see that one side wasn't doing the same as the other side. So yeah, a manufacturing defect. Well happy with that one. Also, it came with two remotes. This is relevant later on in this video. Right, next up we have this little MP3 player and it says here, volume button sticks. Well, when I'm looking at it, what happens is, basically the up volume doesn't work. So I can hear it through here when you first all turn it on for a split second and when I first all tested it. But then look, if I do minus, I'm all the way down to zero. And when I hit this, it doesn't matter how hard I hit it, it's not working at all. It's only the minus that's working. But it's not working now because I can't go any lower than zero. So yeah, something wrong with the button, the contact, or maybe might be a trace or something or a resistor feeding that. Brand new product, doesn't look like it's ever been used. There's no screws anywhere, so it's gonna be one of these annoying clip things. Wow, it's actually coming apart very easy. Wow, wasn't expecting that. My battery's soldered in, so I can't actually disconnect it very easily. I can see screws here, screws at the top, and two hidden ones there. Right, so this one is still a current product and it is £20. Oh, okay, there's a little ribbon cable here feeding, I don't know, maybe the screen, so I've got to be very careful. Right, let's see if I can see what's going on. So the plus button is this one here. Right, well that should be working. I wonder is it just not, do you know what? I don't think it's centered very nice. Maybe there's corrosion. These are just stuck down, aren't they? Hmm. Well, it looks just fine. Have we got a little knobbly bit here that hits it? Yes, we have. All right, let me just rearrange this ever so slightly. Maybe it's just clicking down, it's not quite clicking here, it might be clicking on the edge or something. But it looks to be pretty centered. I'll tell you what we'll do. I'm not convinced it's that. Let's turn it on and see if we can put the volume up with this here. Yes, we can. You see that? Yeah, so it's just a button problem. It must be just ever so slightly misplaced. Let's stick it down there now. Is that one going to work now? Yeah, look. That one. Okay. Uh, I don't know why that was. Not too sure. We still don't know it's going to work with this, though. Maybe this isn't pressing down onto it very nicely. Everything looked perfect, but yeah, it's working. So, I'm not sure. So I just need to do the screws back up and then clip it all back together. Very similar fault to the clock radio that I did that also had a stick on clicky button and that needed rearranging as well. So yeah, odd because I mean it looked to be centralized enough and it was clicking and all the contacts were clean. So why was it not working? But it certainly wasn't working. It didn't matter how hard I pressed that button earlier, it wasn't working. So uh, yeah, let's test it now. There we go. Fantastic. 
Well, that was a particularly easy one. All right, next up we have these Sony headphones and it says here, left side not working. Well, it's not the left side, it's the right side. And I'm not gonna be able to show you, but basically when I plug it in here, this side's working fine, so this is the left side, so it's the right side that's not working. Now, I've tried wiggling this everywhere here and I've wiggled all along the wires and there's no difference whatsoever. Also, I'm looking in here and I'm thinking that these look very, very new. I don't think they've had any use at all. So do you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking that it might be an actual speaker problem in here. So let's see if we can take it apart. I wonder if we were to give it a few taps. How about if I get my vice and give it a squeeze because this vice is rubber. It's got rubber bits on it. Let's give it a squeeze and see if it pops open. So normally when you use headphones, it's the wires that go and they normally go here, don't they, where it joins the thing, but this just looks all brand new. Is that gonna pop off? Nope. No. I thought we might flex a bit. Right, I think I'm gonna have to take these off. Now they'll probably crack. Oh, there we go, did you hear that? That popped, didn't it? Oh, here we go, look at that, result, we're in. We're in, yes. No way, and I haven't broken it. Well, look at that. I'm wondering if there's gonna be a speaker, a little speaker problem here. Result, let's zoom in and see what's what. So let's see, we can test both ways from here, can't we? From the wires, back to here, but also we can test to see if the speaker's working because we should be getting some sort of ohm reading. Oh, no, we are. 15 ohms, no, it is a wire problem. Interesting. That's not good, so they're not gonna be fixable. Right, okay, well, they would be, but you'd have to uh, renew the wire so it's gonna look rubbish. Oh well, I thought it might be a speaker problem, I thought I might be able to fix the speaker. Let me just see if I've got anything between here and here. Okay, so we've got that one there. So it is this one here, which is not working. Yeah, so it's that one. That's the reason it's not working. So it's the ground, isn't it, which is not working. Because that's gonna be tip. Uh, you know, do, what is it, tip ring or whatever in ground. This one's mic as well. I presume that must be a mic in here. Right, so it's that wire. Okay, let's have a, oh, hold on. Oh, sorry, that's going through. That's going through here. So that doesn't, no, that doesn't prove anything. We're gonna have to unsolder this. No, actually, sorry, we should be able to see, because we know, what was the, what was the speaker itself? We should be able to work that out. So the speaker itself is, call it 15 ohms. So now let's see what it is from here to here. So that's 20 ohms. So that's the one which is not working. No, hold on, sorry, I'm getting mixed up. Six ohms, so that's working. Beg your pardon, yeah, this one here is the one that's not working, because look, six ohms, yeah? That's the same as me doing that. Well, it's one ohm, but through there. So I think it's this wire which isn't actually working. Which is the ground again, yeah. Because it's coming up through there through the speaker. Right, let's unsolder it and see. Just gonna take a picture in case I do fix it so I know which way they go back. Well, it is a shame that the speaker wasn't faulty because if it was, I've got a stack of these in various different job lots. So I could have just taken a speaker out one of them, put a bit of super glue around the little earphone and then it would have worked like factory again. But that's not the case here. It's a fault in the wire somewhere. Now, there's a chance it could be a fault where the knot is just right by the speaker that I was just working on. So I strip it back a couple of inches and uh, put fresh solder on there, but it's still not getting to 3.5 millimeter jack. So the fault is in the jack area itself, probably in the strain relief. 
Normally, you'd probably give up, but the stream relief on these actually do work their way back. When you put some tweezers in and work the way around, you can slide them back along the cable. Well, that's fantastic then, because basically you can then cut back an inch, two, three, four inches of cable, wherever the break is, and then you can re-solder them onto the jack. The problem is, is the color code can always be a bit confusing. It's a four pole jack, but there's more than four wires because the microphone will have a ground, the left audio will have a ground, and also the right audio will have a ground. So you see now that already that's just three grounds alone, and then we've got all the other wires to, uh, you know, for the actual audio signal to go down for the microphone and the left and right audio. So it takes me quite a while to work out the color code. Annoyingly, these are only $9.99. I thought Sony earphones would be a lot more than that, but no, they're $9.99, so most people wouldn't fix them. But saying that, if they're your own, it doesn't actually take that long. The, the most time-consuming part is working out the color code, and I've done that. Well, I think I've done that, to the best of my ability anyway. So this is it here. We've got two wires, haven't we? On the one cable, we've actually got two wires. And then going off to one earphone, we've just got a red and a gold. The gold is always going to be basically the ground. And then on the other wire, we have a green, two golds, and a black. So I think from memory, the black was the microphone, and then the green was, for example, the left or right, and that was the other left or right. But we don't really have to worry about what swap, because having it like this, it appears to work, and I think this is how it was originally. So basically, this is your four-pole jack here, but you don't solder onto this, because obviously this is the bit that goes into your phone or whatever you're plugging it into, but the other end of this jack has the connections going through here, and the smallest connection goes right the way through to the end one here, which will be green. So you put green to that one, red to that one, gold to that one and then black to this one here so basically this one here is going to be green this one here is going to be red gold black so you can just buzz it out with your meter for continuity so go on to one probe onto here and then find out where it comes onto here but basically you will always find it where the middle one here the smallest one at the very end will be this one here well they're the ones that i used to sell years ago anyway so uh, yeah that's it there so you can take a screenshot off that and then you'll be able to fix your own hopefully nice and easy what i did is i just soldered all the gold ones together and then the gold ones go on to uh, the biggest one out here actually it's this one here it's nice and big so uh, yeah that's it there obviously it's got all enamel coating on but by the time you burn solder onto it it burns through. The solder's hot enough to burn through the enamel coating and touch the copper on the inside. So uh, yeah, they're actually quite easy to fix once you've messed around with it for a little bit. So uh, now that I've got this one working, I'm actually going to speed test another one and we'll see how long it takes to fix another pair. Right, so on these ones, it's the right one that's not working, left one is. So here we go. Let's see, I reckon it's going to take about 15 minutes. So the reason it's going to be much quicker this time is because I'm not messing with the headphones. It's likely then that all of these are probably going to have faults on the strain relief boots just where they meet the jack. So that's where I go straight for. Now, every time you time yourself doing something, of course, it's going to take much longer because that's just the laws of the universe. It was all going smoothly until I plugged it in to listen. And then I noticed one side was a lot quieter than the other side. And this is the reason why. Oh, I think I could puke. I did it all, plugged it in, and one side was very quiet. And look, oh my God, look at this. I've put that in my ears and it's completely clogged with earwax. That's the reason it's quiet. Look, oh, someone else's earwax. Oh, oh my word. Look at that. That's the reason it's quiet. Oh. All right, I'm gonna clean them with IPA. Oh my, oh my God, that's that's golden. That really is golden. Oh, deary me. Well, isn't that lovely? I seem to be having more and more close-ups of earwax in my video. I'm not doing it intentionally. I just seem to be getting more and more items where earwax is an issue. Anyway, at this time in the video, I thought, yeah, these are well worth fixing. But now, looking back, when I'm editing, I'm thinking, you know what? There's no market for these, is there? I can see why people wouldn't want to fix them. I can see why people wouldn't want to sell them. And I can definitely see why people wouldn't want to buy them. Because they're a used product that goes into someone's ears. So I think a lot of people would be worried about the cleanliness of that, especially when it's £10. So, although I'm thinking, yes, it's good to fix them... 
I can actually see now why pretty much nobody would fix them, sell them, or buy them. So yeah, probably they're not not the best, <laughs> not the best item. So let's finish up this one and move on to the next one. Annoyingly, the next one is headphones, <laughs> which I suppose some people are going to think the same. But headphones don't seem as invasive as earphones. I think we can all agree that. Anyway, let's move on with the video. Right, and stop the watch. That took. Well, nearly, nearly 16 minutes. So, uh, yeah, okay. Not bad. I think it is worth it to have working headphones again. Now, let's just test them. Let me just first of all show. So, these bits now are nice and clean. They're back to white on the inside rather than yellow, and I've cleaned up these. Obviously, you can replace these nice and cheaply. And that there looks pretty respectable. So, you can see it there now. I think everybody would be happy to use that. So although, yeah, for £10, it's probably, well, it's not really worth a professional doing it, but if they were your own ones, I think uh, if you like messing around with stuff like this and it saves you going out and spending £10, and you don't actually have to use any, uh, you don't have to spend any money on them. It's just a tiny, what, a couple of pence worth of solder. Right, here we go. So that's it there, volume up. Pause, play, play, there we go. Google, what time is it in Los Angeles? There we go. Excellent. Well, happy with that. So there we go. You can always pause that if you want it to fix your own ones up there. All right, let's have a look at this headset here. So it's Geotech XH100X and uh, they're 12 dollars so they're not expensive. But basically, it says here that the left ear no sound, but there is sound out of the left one. It's the right one that's no sound. So everything here works, this side. All this works, the uh, mic mute works. That's quite nice, you put that down there. Clearly tells you that it's in red, so uh, nobody can hear you. And when you do that, it, uh, the microphone is working, you, uh, you push it down here like that. So it's something over this side that isn't working. Now I've plugged it into my phone and I've wiggled this like crazy and it's not giving me any little crackle whatsoever. So I am gonna start at the actual driver up here. Just in case it's the connection maybe here, this might be the speaker, or it might be the wires that go from here up to here. So uh, yeah, because there is some weird staining going on in here. You never know, it might be an issue here rather than here, which would be nice. So let's see how this comes apart. Okay, that's that. Weird, so look, it's been uh, a load of glue. <laughs> Hold on a minute, what should it look like? Should that, that shouldn't, oh, that shouldn't be out that far at all. And there's no wires here, right? So it's quite clear now why it's not working, but where have the wires gone? I just want to see what this middle bit should look like. Right, so remember this is the microphone here as well. That's why there's so many wires. Oh, okay, and then two wires go from this side back through to the other side. So see this one here, or this one. They're gonna be then going up. Little tape on here, so uh, yeah, okay. Right, this is another one that doesn't really want repair because it's only $12.99 to begin with and this one's already had a repair on it where the plastics have been glued together. So even if I do fix it, which I can fix it, it's not actually going to be working as good as new because one of the cups haven't got the range of movement as the other ear cup. You know, one cup moves a little bit up and down, the other one is rock solid. Interestingly enough, when it's actually on your ears, you can't feel the difference between both of them, but still, it's not something that you'd be able to sell on as working, even though it is working as headphones, it's just because it's been glued. I don't think anybody would really buy it. So uh, I am fixing it just because it's on the bench now anyway. Two wires are only just barely sticking out because of all the glue. So what I'm having to do is tin up the two little bits of wire and then I'm putting a new little bit of headphone wire on from another pair of Sony headphones that I've got with a broken wire so I'm just using like the same gauge wire and then I'm extending them out to the actual speakers. Interestingly though 
it still doesn't work. And remember I mentioned the tape earlier, there's a bit of a dry joint in one of the tapes. They do look to be soldered, but it's a kind of very dry looking solder. And I give the wires a slight tug and they just come apart. So that needs to be resoldered then. When I resolder that, it is actually all working. But there's a good chance of where the cup has been glued because the two wires are only sticking out by a couple of millimeters that they might short together. So I'm flooding that area with a little bit of hot glue. And when it goes off, there's no way of those wires are shortened together because they're encased in glue and then I just clip the headphones back on and they're working absolutely perfectly so it seems a shame that these are only 12 99 to begin with because I've listened to the mic and stuff on these and they're not too bad I mean as far as a headset's concerned for a kid maybe on a PlayStation 4 5 or Xbox I think I don't think they would moan too much whatsoever so uh, yeah I personally still think they're worth fixing they're just not worth reselling Anyway, while I'm whizzing through this here, I'll give a shout out to the My Mate Vince Massive. The members this month are KipDigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rockatansky, Having Fun Repairs, Chris Seal, Felipe at MrKeeps.com, DJVG, Pixie, Robert from Timsey's Auto Air, Daniel Watson, Anthony Dean, Bazza2, Russ Melanson, Gaspar Heller, Ricard Berglund, Jacob Culpin, Matt Rawlins, Soul Reaver 555, Angry Owl Tech, and Ellis Garbett. So a massive thank you to each and every one of you. I just want to show you these working at the very end and then we'll move on to something more interesting there we go you can see now that really there should be no reason why that would fail again in there because the glue once it goes fully hard which will be in a few more minutes then it's not going to go anywhere those wires are not going to move from there so uh, yeah i think that this will be a lasting fix result let's get the volume up full you can probably hear it there already. Yeah, they're both fine. So that's that one. And that's that one. Then we had a sing along to the theme from Monkey. That one. Magic. The audience ah. went with it. Mind you, most of them were still there. Let's try the mic. Google. What time is it in New York? Oh, it's worked elsewhere. Google. What time is it in Bristol? Fantastic. And yet again, we have another one of these. What's interesting here is, look what it says. Screen gone off, no remote. <laughs> so I've got two remotes in that one. What are the odds of that? Anyway, yeah, screen's not working. Yeah, it does itself appear to be working. I presume that's FM at the moment. So uh, I can't try the CD because I can't put it on to the correct one here to actually put it on to CD. But yeah, the screen is just white. So uh, yeah, let's take it apart and see if we can work out what's going on that screen. I couldn't believe that when I seen that about the remote control. What are the odds? The good thing about this one so far is that nothing's been messed around with. You know, I'm the first one into these products. So uh, they're always gonna be much more repairable because some of them are gonna be nice, easy fixes. So with this one here, I have to take it apart further than last time because last time we just took it apart as far as the disc drive. But now we need to go one board below that again because we need to get to the screen. So I'm gonna start from the screen area because that's the thing that's not working. And we'll have a look around the place and see if there's anything obvious. I'm just doing the plastic things to try and leave that behind. There we go. Right now you want to come. No, you don't. What's, oh, there's a, oh, wow, there's a ribbon. Oh, God, there's a ribbon cable. Oh, no, that's bad, that. How on earth are you supposed to do that? It's got a ribbon cable soldered onto it. Why didn't they just make a connector? How on earth am I going to get that out? Right, let's undo this here. That's annoying that, because everything else comes apart really nicely. Here we go. Right, let's see what's going on. I'm going to leave that in there, otherwise I'll forget which way it goes in. Right, what's going on with you? Has the screen just failed or is it something else? Back, back right is clearly working. 
Uh, let's have a look at the solar connections. Oh, it's got some other thing here. Oh, this is for the remote control, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm. Does that one look a bit iffy? Did that one next to it look a bit iffy? Let's do a continuity between them. It'd be great if it was just a bit of a solder problem. Again, this thing looks immaculate, so I say it's faulty for manufacture. Nah, that's a shame. Oh. No. Nah, they're all alright. Oh, what a shame. So continuity wise, they're all okay, which suggests it's gonna be perfect. So I'll have a little look around the board to see if there's anything obvious, and unfortunately there's not. It's all immaculate. The only thing that doesn't look great is the solder job. So now I'm gonna to try to just re-solder. I'm taking off the ribbon cable, and I'm gonna clean everything up, and I'm just gonna put solder on everything. So this side of the ribbon cable, the other side of the ribbon cable, then I'm gonna tin up the pads, and then I'm gonna solder them all down again because the solder connections, although they're testing fine with continuity, they don't actually look the best, do they? So I'm gonna add plenty of solder and then there's no doubt in my mind that it's making a good connection. Okay, so they're all done now. Might not look as neat as before, but there's plenty of solder on them, and I know that the top and bottom is 100% connected on each of them, and they're not short into each other. Well, so I'm just gonna pop this back together and see if it behaves any differently, but I don't know if I'm gonna take it any further, because I think it's probably just gonna be a screen fault. Well, I'm wondering if that would be enough to give me some sort of display, because I presume this is going up to feed the... Uh this drive. So let's just plug it in and see what it's going to do now. Oh wow, 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 wow. Result! How good is that? It was a bad solder job. No way, because I tested for community, uh, continuity and it was all right. You know what it must have been? It must have been underneath wasn't very happy. You know what I mean? Maybe the, uh, I don't know, I mean, we had pins on both sides of that ribbon cable, but I presume they went through to each other. But they must have gone through to each other. Anyway, who knows? But 
it's there now. What a result, unbelievable. I wasn't expecting that to work. Right, let's get this back together. So I wasn't sure when I was fixing this as to why it started to work, but I think when I've edited it back, I think I realize. I think it always was a bad connection between the ribbon cable and the circuit board, but my meter tested fine for continuity because you see, it wasn't in the position it was in originally. I had the screen flipped out and also I was pressing down with my probes to get a contact. I reckon if the screen was tucked behind the circuit board and if I was really light on my probes, I reckon maybe one or two of the pins wouldn't have had continuity. Backlight must have been working because it was bright white. I don't think it was getting data. So I reckon one of the contacts for data wasn't working properly. So the screen didn't know what to do. It wasn't being told what to do from the circuit board. So although the meter did test fine for continuity, it wasn't in the same position as it would have been when it was all closed up. So yeah, obviously we know soldering it has fixed it, but I wasn't sure why. But now I'm pretty sure that there must have been a bad solder joint that wasn't quite making a contact and maybe by opening up the screen like I did to the side it was putting an extra bit of pressure down on the flex cable against the circuit board and that's why it started to work. Annoyingly when I put it back together there's a speck of dust in the lens <laughs> so I have to uh, take the lens off to clean that. Also there's a little bit of IPA stain on the screen as well so I have to give that a clean. And then when I do my testing, I realize that the remote control's not working. And it's because that little IR sensor that I showed you earlier has a little cubby hole to go in. And when I just put it back together, the IR sensor sort of got moved out the way because it's on three long legs, long prongs. So uh, yeah, I had to take it apart again. I thought I'd be able to get to it from the front, but I couldn't. So I had to take it apart again to then put the IR sensor in its right cubby hole. But anyway, after all that, it's working fine. So let me just show you that now. Yeah, it's working now. If I go to unmute, you can hear it's working and mute and it's working from different angles. There we go. Perfect. Excellent. Right now we have this. This should be really interesting. So this is a Sony little audio system here. So it does tape, CD, radio and also aux in. I went through everything and I left the tape to last and it was all work and I thought, oh, that's annoying because it doesn't say on the box what the fault is. But this is clearly brand new. Yeah, nice packaging and everything. This hasn't been used. Anyway, look, if you play here, CD's working just fine. But if I go over to tape, it's not playing. It's turning the wheels down here, but let me just double check that. Yeah, I can feel it turning, but yeah, it's not playing anything. And I've tried another tape as well. No audio whatsoever, and it's not volume. So basically volume works on audio in, on the radio, FM, AM, and on the CD, but not on the tape. So I think that should be interesting. So let's see what's going on with this cassette thing here. I don't know if this is gonna be fixable or not. I think this might be complicated, but I'm looking forward to seeing the inside. Right, so this one here is a CFD S70, and current product again in the shops right now in Argos for 79.99 so 80 UK pounds. It's got 1,036 reviews, so you can see how popular it is. If that's the amount of reviews, how many items have been sold? Easily 10 or 20 times that, so well worth fixing. Now I've got to be careful because this has got mains going into it, so I'm not sure if it's going to be a switch mode power supply or a linear power supply, but there's a chance that there might be high voltage in here. So there's five screws on the bottom, the crosshead ones, and there's also two more screws hidden away underneath the handle there. But it still doesn't come apart very easy. You need to kind of prise it off, and then the bottom back section will come away. Right, so it's a linear power supply here, so I'm not gonna to worry too much about this. It looks like it's rectifying it down to DC uh, as well. So this must be just low voltage coming out of this part here. Right, we don't have to worry about any of that because we know all of that is okay. It's just a tape mechanism, which is not okay. So how do I even get into there? That looks like the motor for it. It's the fact that it's not playing. Why is it not playing? I've got to find out where the tape head is and then go from there. So that's the tape head there. See, maybe this thing is not reading properly, you know, the little tape head. 
I think I need to take this board out. Well, after working on the Bush products that come apart so easy, because they're kind of cheap and cheerful, this Sony one seems a nightmare to take apart. So it just seems so much more compact in the inside and just much more screws hidden away and just awkward to get to. But anyway, the board comes out nice and easy. The hard bit is, is there's metal, like a metal frame for the tape cassette and three of the screws I can get to, but the fourth screw I just can't get to. If I had a tiny, but it'd have to be tiny, little ratchet screwdriver right angle thing, then you'd be able to get to it. But with a normal screwdriver, you can't. Even if I use my flexible part on the iFixit toolkit, it's this, it doesn't flex enough. You need basically a right angle screwdriver to get in here. So what I'm trying to do is put a bit into some pliers and painfully just turn it, not even a quarter of a turn at a time because there's so little room to work. This reminds me of working on a car, you know, when there's no space and you're having to just undo something like a 16th of a turn and yet it probably needs to undo by a bit about 10 whole turns and it's just very very time consuming but anyway eventually I do manage to get the tape mechanism out and then we can have a look to see if we can work out why it's not playing is there a broken wire somewhere or a broken ribbon cable let's check it out oh let me eject it no it is ejected oh here we go yeah I think I just got to manhandle it a bit more wow it's horrible that's horrible to take out Okay, so I don't think it's anything to do with that top board there. How do you work? So, when we press play, this comes down. So are you not reading? So this, oh, that's record there. So those two are record, that and that, and then that comes up. So why are you, so this is something, see it could be this board here, it could be this chip here. See it's all spinning okay, so the motor side of it is okay. See maybe this thing here is faulty. I'm not going to give away the outcome, but use your eyes on this bit and see if you spot what I didn't. Solder joints are okay. Well, let's check for continuity. Just in case there's some weird break in the wire, I'm thinking now that it could be I wonder is this the thing that's converting the signals from here into sound? So if we were to put power in and we were to go to right and left out, would we get a signal coming from here? And then that would say whether this is faulty or whether it's something on the actual main board itself. That's the yellow one. Red one. The white and ground. It's not short than anywhere else. Well, it all looks okay to me. I think we need to get it somehow back together, but still with access. So this is gonna be very, very hard to do. Do you know what I'll do? Let me, let me use batteries because then I don't have to worry about getting electrocuted. Right, let's see if we've got any life in it. Yes, we have. Right, it says CD at the moment, because I'm just gonna try to change it to, uh, what's it say now, open? I think I need to probably short something in order to get it to work. Here maybe, this green thing. <laughs> I can't even get it to play. So I'm not sure what I need to be hitting. It's 
How am I going to do this? Oh, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Look at this here. Look at this here. Maybe it was spinning, but it wasn't putting the tape round because look, we have a load of tape wrapped around here. Right, let me just go disconnect power a minute. Right, there we go. I've unplugged the uh, I've unplugged the batteries. Oh, look at that! Wow. Okay, well that wouldn't have been spinning properly, would it? So maybe it just wasn't putting the tape through. Maybe that was it. I should have looked for the most obvious thing first. It was quite a bit of tape wrapped around that. That was all wrapped around that there and a little bit more here. That was all wrapped around that tiny little pinch roller. It's about three quarters of a metre. Okay, let's, uh, let's put it back together. I've got it back together, but no screws are in it yet, but yet all the mechanism at the front is screwed in. I managed to get the nightmare screw by using this at an angle and it managed to go and I had to do it by hand and also long nose pliers to begin with. But once I started it, I managed to do it with this. So uh, yeah, all good. Right, let's see now if it's gonna work. I'm gonna say yes, because everything's immaculate. And it's Sony, so I would hope that the mechanism is gonna be all right. Right, so this should be the archers or whatever's on the other side. Not my stable lad. I quite enjoy mucking out. There we go. Oh, I'm as warm as toast, except for my fingers. And the remedy is a. That... Fantastic. Bang! Horses are absolutely. I feel I'm deserting my own horse. Three. It's long. <laughs> That's 15 feet wide. These are single roof. Existing Catholic church built on the foundations of the crusade. So there we have it. I've put all this back together now and it is working just fine. So I think that was a real successful job lot there. The three items at the back should cover the cost of both both boxes because I'm pretty sure these are £80 items so it's believable that between the three of them you're going to get £100 back. So everything else in the box now is just going to be a bonus. And what a brilliant seller to buy from because nothing has been tampered with. There's been no repairs attempted on these. I was the first one in all of these apart from this thing here and that would have been the customer not the seller. So uh, yeah, really, really good. A great buy. So I will be doing more items in those two boxes there because there's some interesting stuff there. There is some JBL headphones in there, so I presume they're not going to be dirt cheap things. So uh, yeah, everything else in that box now will be pure profit, which is, uh, which is great. If you enjoyed the video, give it a massive thumbs up. If you like these kind of job lot type videos, then uh, think about subscribing if you haven't already. And I will see you with the other items in the two boxes in another upcoming video. And hopefully we might be just as successful as we were on these ones here, because everything I attempted today was fixable, which is uh, really, really good news. Thanks for watching everyone, take care. Nowadays we're all so spread out A time zone for each of our hearts When tragedy strikes will we men Come together to say our goodbyes Or will we stay